Morning, really? <laughs> Lincoln 10 North Carolina. Here we go. We're going to Disney. Uh, on our way to the Lee Boy factory. This is like going to a theme park. I hope they have a roller coaster. <laughs> Everyone here got a pickup truck. Morning. 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 Wow. I feel like I'm in Disney. <laughs> huh? How, are, How you? are you, young lady? Hi. I'm Bill. Now you guys are building everything in this factory, right? Not just pavers and your everything, right? Yeah, Roscoe, the, the whole line, right? Brooms, Roscoe, everything. Yeah. We could probably use a couple of those parts, huh? <laughs> right? I guarantee you. Be checking your pockets. Yeah. Up, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you should do a, a search after we leave, right? <laughs> yeah, so it is a shared warehouse. So it supports production and service parts. Yeah, yeah. And after 445, it supports the customers. Yeah. We, we steal parts and have to. Yeah, you can see it's not a small warehouse. Wow, this is um, so uh, many uh, uh, legacy products that we've built over the years. Yeah. It's such a broad product offering. Yeah. It's this a, is crazy though to think that this guy started in his barn, right? Should drop the mask. No. Uh, violation. <laughs> <laughs> this is obviously a screen plate, right? No. No, that's a top back, probably for oh. 88 or something. That's yeah, what 88 is dusting. Dude, it's something we're not building anymore. Yeah, so that, that's obsolete. Obviously, we just saw the warehouse. This corner of the facility is well. Crazy. Yeah, look at the cranes they got. Yeah. How are you, sir? Good, sir. Good. Good. So, obviously, your paver is your biggest seller, right? But yes, does, that, does that outdo all your other products together, by, even? By far. Really? Really? What's this guy doing? So, this is, over the last several years, we've insourced all of our electrical assemblies. So this department used to just be a couple of guys on a bench who would build a prototype. And we found that we could save cost, improve quality, reduce inventory, and Im improve supply to the production lines by insourcing it. So it's been a multi-year project, but he's building a harness. For a pavement machine, obviously. Uh, I'd have to look at that. Yeah, left forward, right is. steer box, left steer box. Yep, sounds like it to me. Yeah. yeah. And he's, yeah. he's, he's got the design from him upstairs or is he designing it as he goes? We have a print. Yeah. The management and the engineers will sketch it out on a piece of paper. Yeah. He'll build to that print. We occasionally have to turn these over, right? If, if this is a broom or a lower volume machine, we'll pull it off and roll up a new one. So once it's down on that piece of paper, we can roll it up, reuse it Pretty as needed. Pretty cool way to do a wiring thing, huh? Yeah. 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 We got a couple of these that never come down. Like some of our paver harnesses. Yeah, right, right, right. But um, yeah, that's cool. In the back. So we're building all of our control panels and all of our harnesses here. The harnesses take up a ton of room. I see that. As you can see. Yeah. The the control panels not so much. They're bench built in the background. There he's got it where he can project that drawing on the wall and not crazy. Yeah, yeah we're again with the the space and the turnover. Time consuming. So some of our lower volume harnesses, we're gonna project. So they can project them, put their magnetic mounts up, build a harness, take it down, project the next one. That's just coming on the So after this now. is all done, you have to plug it in and make sure it really works, right? Yeah, right. And see how they're labeled every four inches? Yeah, a lot goes into this baby, huh? Yeah, that that's um, that machine, it can it can strip and crimp one end of the cable, advance it, labeling it as it goes, cut the other end, strip it, and crimp the other end in about two seconds. Really? Per wire. Wow. So that's what's really allowed us to bring all this in. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, that's the braiding machine. We've got two braiding machines. We'll my hands. Oh, yeah, braids it, yeah. Yeah, so that's all done mechanically. And that keeps keep the guys from getting in there because you can't get in there to with right, right, right. Here's the one thousand. This is the one that we only want. We build it. The one thousand. We put the again. You mind if I step in here a second? That's the that's the bottom of a pave. That, this is the bottom of a Lee Boy one thousand paving machine. Boy, oh, it looks small sitting there like that, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Years ago, we'd have had that rack and just stuck the stuff on it. Now, see how they got it cantilevered? Yeah. So the crane can pick it up. They don't have to hurt their got back. It, got it. Got it. Yeah, we've really been modernizing the plant the last Yeah, right. 
Right, simple little thing like that, right? Right. This is all done. All that constant intercractor ready to go up and down. And this station's about to go away because we're going to buy all of our undercarriages pre assembled. Yeah, this is where the 8,500 conveyor paper starts. We purchased the frame and then the assembly line goes that way. Cool stuff, huh? Down. A picture of him welding over there. Oh yeah. That's it. This little paint prep area we're in now. The paint is right behind us. Oh, that's paint. They're hanging items. They're doing some sanding. Paint yeah. Prep. Yeah. We also make all of our tanks here now. Do you? Over the last two years. You'll see the laser. We, we we added a laser a few years ago, but every one of our... So here's something Shannon brought in. You know, he's here sanding parts. He's got this hooked to a vacuum system, so there's no oh, dust. No oh, no kidding. Yeah. The environment, less sandpaper, better for the employees. This is some of the stuff that he yeah. brought good, in. Like good for Kenny, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was like a dust cloud out here. Yeah, just, back in just added 10 years on his life. So we bought <laughs> yeah. uh, like uh, your big auto detailing yeah. shops. They've got a massive central back. Exactly what we put in here. So we're not only trying to bring up the product quality dramatically, we're trying to bring up our process quality dramatically. That was a street assembly table last year. This is our you don't have to look at these two very hard to see the difference. Like yeah. The machine plates, the adjustment bolts. Yeah. You know we have cutting, we have striker plates here versus just hit it anywhere you want. So. So is this functional, barring that um, you're not just sitting the screen on here? This has adjustments on it also. Yeah. So. Explain that. We, we we found that over the years we bought a hundred thousand dollar precision inspection tool. We found that these could get out a little bit over time. So we're gonna build something bomb proof that's adjustable and replaceable. So you actually set your screed plate on here and make sure it's true. Yeah, you need one of these. All the way across. Yep. I need one of these at my shop. Yeah. Right? Good morning, my man. How you doing? Good, brother. That's your berm attachment, Mark? Yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. What? The last one of the berm goes up there. Berm, right? Okay. So everybody we met this morning doesn't matter. It's only Tim right here. This is the guy that matters. Don't <laughs> listen to anybody else. Right, Tim? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Nice work, brother. This is actually, this is where, the, this is start. We went in reverse, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I expect this picture's paper itself. <laughs> we built every 8816 screen we've ever built. Really? We built the HD Pro for it. How long have you been here, Tom? Uh, 28 years. My man. My man. We wrote a lot of miles on the back of your, your work. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yep. What am I looking at? Hey! Hey! <laughs> 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 down, they're looking for any fault, you know, shipping that has to be done. They spend an insane amount of time making sure the paint job's gonna last. We talked about that vacuum system. You can kind of see it coming through here. Yeah. Yeah. Going through something like this, you really appreciate what goes into building something, you know? Yeah. Building anything, right? It's, it's a lot goes into it. That's cool. Usually 
the black and yellow. Okay. Then we got two drying rooms here, 150 degrees for an hour, so we can take them out the detail. So it goes around into you, and then we got what we call a checkout line over there. Nashville. Yep, Nashville, man. How you doing, bud? How you? Doing good. Are you guys going uh, joystick control now on the blade yet, or on the graders? No. no, we're not. We tried going there years ago, and it didn't work. So we're staying with the levers. So this is a thicker plate. If we had thin gauge in there, you'd be amazed how quick this thing. Yeah, works. right, right, right. But this went in in the uh, end of 18, and uh, it's been a home run for us. We run it two shifts. We're starting to think about another one. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's got butterflies. <laughs> what you got? Oh, wow, how cool is that? Big reveal. Wow, look at the blankets and all. Hey! Huh? I feel like I'm at Disney. You guys got a roller coaster back here? Forklift, there you go. Hey Jack, how are you? How are you doing, huh? Hey, how are we doing, sir? Good, good, good to see you guys. Hey, What's up, brother? Again. Good. I'm Bill. Brandon. 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 Bill, I said there's a cotton candy machine under this show here. I said I'm looking for a roller coaster out here. I feel like I'm at Disney. <laughs> right? First thing I gotta say, we gotta get this out of the way. You guys need some work on your parking lot. You need a little work. You got some reflective cracking going on here. I have to Photoshop this. Huh? Yeah, right. I mean, if you got, we got enough guys here. If you want to go get the material, we could probably throw something in today. But any of you guys can interject at any time. Oh, we're good at interrupting each other. That's pretty much standard issue. Hi, I'm Amy Schwant with Pavement Maintenance and Asphalt Contractor Magazine. Today, we are taking a tour of the Lee Boy factory in Lincolnton, North Carolina, as well as a special unveiling of a new machine. First, we're going to have a conversation with the Stanley family and the Lee family, whose households share a very similar family history. And these two families have teamed up for a very special project, a custom 8250B raised on blacktop paver. 8520B. Did you just say 8250? <laughs> All right. She's thinking about the sale at like down at Home Goods. I don't even know what an 8250 is. <laughs> a custom 8520B raised on black top paver. We'll start today by introducing the Stanley family who own American Pavement Specialists out of Danbury, Connecticut, and the Lee family who founded Lee Boy in 1964. Bill, tell us a little bit about American Pavement Specialists how you started your company and how it's grown over the years. Um, our company is not different than most companies in the United States, I think. We started a small family business with a dollar and a dream. Uh, been at it for 30 years now and uh, the companies um, we're doing quite well um, and we're, we're taking our place with the third generation here. Your company is family owned and operated with second generation and now third generation yep. taking on leadership roles. Yep. So why is this important and how does it help strengthen not only your business but also your family? Well, family first um, and family and business um, go together. Sometimes they don't manage to stay together but uh, we're working on that really hard and uh, business is about young people. We need young people in our industry and these guys are at the forefront of it uh, and some of these young fellas on the uh, ladies on the other side are also on the forefront of it and uh, we're hopefully building a business for our next generation of family. Growing your family and business really is something unique and a lot of companies in asphalt do. So that's a really neat story and, and wish you the best with continued Thank growth you. there. Thank you. And actually that story is similar to the story of the Lee family and B.R. Lee, who built the first self-propelled commercial paver in 1970 out of his garage. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about growing up watching B.R. Lee build these machines and how it helped shape not only hard work but inspired you as a family. To me, it was uh, the simple fact he was a visionary and uh, I was amazed at, at how he could take an idea in his mind and, and write it on a piece of paper, a napkin, a, a matchbook, a floor and, uh, and, and make it come to life and, and, and how he would, uh, the first one he built, he would change a little bit and he kept improving over over the years, and, and to me, that's the, one of the biggest things I remember about B.R. Lee. It was uh, 
was his innovation. That's, his that's amazing talent to have. Yes, it is. I just remember growing up, you know, he had his favorite spot. He had a lounge chair under a shade tree, and he was always thinking, always thinking about what to do to these machines and improve them. How about you, being involved in the family? Me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, hold on, you might cut this. Garrett, how did BR inspire you? He inspired me to work hard and support my family in whatever means necessary. And he was really, one of the character traits he had was he would tell you how to, or tell you to go do something and you would have to figure it out on your own because if it wasn't done his way, he didn't like it. And he ain't about, he wasn't about to tell you how to do it. So you had to figure it out yourself. Sure. A lot of us grandkids, you know, grew up from day one being in this. So it wasn't just us and the, the guys you see here, but my mother, my grandmother, the wives. I mean, we all, that's all we knew, you know, so we, so the summertime came around. There wasn't daycares, there wasn't camps. We spent our summers in the shop, you know. As children, we didn't do much, but, you know, he'd find ways of make us, hey, just sweep the floor, we'll give you $3 an hour, you know. And I was not the best sweeper. I wasn't good at it. You know, we found <laughs> ways around it, but it was still every summer we were doing something. We were around it. So, you know, we got to grow up just seeing your mom and dad come home from work. They're talking about it. That's pretty much all your life. You know, you know nothing of business outside of what what he's taught us. Why is it important, do you guys think, to instill that hard work in kids at an early age? Can I, can I, can I, can I? Absolutely. Okay, so I have four sons. Um, these guys went off to college, played Little League, um, had every opportunity into the world to do whatever they wanted to do. Um, but I took them when they were three years old. As soon as they could walk, I threw them in the truck with me because I thought one thing the most important um, and much like the Lee family, I'm sure, I wanted to teach them how to work. I wasn't going to let them pick up lazy habits, bad habits down the street. And my wife said I was doing the wrong thing. She said um, they need to go work elsewhere and to learn that they got to start from the bottom. I started them from the bottom and Is that I true? taught. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Certified. Oh, yeah. You start with a shovel. You start with a broom. We swept for $3 an hour. Everyone here in this line swept for $3 an hour. And I believe that that character, um, wherever this entire family ends up tomorrow, next week, if they end up sailing real estate, uh, sailing yachts across the uh, Mediterranean Sea, once that's implant implanted in a child, it, it, you can't take that away. And that's where family strength comes from in business right through the ladder right through the ladder we are didn't know me anything he didn't know them anything and uh, he expected you to work for what you got and he'd pay you but he expected you to be there and to work that doesn't go away and i tried it? to take and use them same things in my children yep. my wife and i both uh, expected them to get up in the morning and go to work yeah Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, this is the exact yeah. type of dedication to the industry that inspired the Raised on Blacktop movement, which is why we're here Absolutely. today. So, can you tell me a little bit how this got started? Leave that up to Matt, he's the guy here. Yeah, um, I mean, as American Pavement, um, we do a lot on social media. Um, we wanted to start selling our gear online, and I thought instead of maybe not just doing just American Pavement gear, why don't we create something that the whole industry can come together? Because as we know, pavers, it's a competitive industry, right? We're not always friendly. I like to think we are with our local contractors. Um, but if we can all come together as something as simple as raised on blacktop, I mean, if you think about it too, I would say maybe eight out of 10 paving companies in the country are probably family owned businesses, right? Anyone can connect to raised on blacktop and now even more so, um, I have my friends wearing raised on blacktop and it, it just represents hard work represents hustle um, and family so I think it's such a cool initiative just the play on words and how you guys have branded yourselves you. and really the entire industry is starting to recognize it and it's right. it's cool to really come together yeah so. and we're, we're hoping that for outsiders and, and everybody that it it's not just about being raised on blacktop it's also about being raised to hustle with with your family that's right. what the brand also stands for how do you think it can help inspire new generations of hard workers. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty simple. Um, if we can get, like I said, there's a lot of family-owned paving companies, right? So if we can just get the kids 
that are come from a family owned business to stay in the business, to grow up thinking that paving is cool, paving is fun, and paving as we all know is a great way to make some coin. So um, if we could just keep that going and keep our families involved in the business, I think that's a great start. But we also have individuals in our town that see us and they see, oh look at these guys, it's cool, it's hip, it's sexy. <laughs> and they want to be a part of that. We have 15 year olds coming in 10th grade that are sending us messages on, on uh, Facebook and Instagram saying, can we come work for you? Right. Um, right. And that's, we think is huge that right. we're inspiring these kids, maybe not to go to college, but to pick up a trade. Um, and that's what we're all about as well. And, and asphalt uh, is not a dirty job anymore. No. And when I started it was, but now it's pretty high end, pretty technical. And obviously getting real cool is we're standing behind a blanket today, which when Mike and I started it was unheard of. I mean, we'd be, it's, this, is, sure. this, is a, this is a thousand years away from where we started, that's for sure. Right. Speaking of the blanket, we have a special edition paver to unveil here to both of you families for bringing this Raised on Blacktop initiative to Lee Boy. And we will then talk about the partnership with Lee Boy. But first, let's show you guys what this is all about. Let's check out the hype. Work out. This? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks pretty good, huh? <laughs> Look at the carbon fiber. Yeah. <laughs> Looks exactly like what we threw in Photoshop. Yeah, it does, right? <laughs> <laughs> 